We're going to use the following simple interest formula for just about every problem in this section. I equals P times R times T, where P represents the principal of the loan, which is the amount of credit that you're being given. R represents the interest rate, and as you'll see, we always want to write our interest rates as decimals. And T represents time, and time is either measured in days or months or years, and how we measure time depends on how we're given our interest rate. For example, if our interest rate is, say, 1% percent per day, then our time t is measured in days. More commonly, if our interest rate is given annually or per year, then our time t in this problem is also going to be measured in years. So what we say is that our time is expressed in the same period as our interest rate. So hit pause on the browser here if you want to write all this down, because I'm going to move on to the first problem where I show you how to use this simple interest formula. We want to calculate the simple interest. The rate is an annual rate. We're going to assume 360 days in a year. That's called the banker's rule, where we assume 30 days in every month and 12 months in the year. That keeps things simple. We will actually not be using that fact in this problem because we're told that this rate, this interest rate, is an annual interest rate and our time is given in years. That's exactly what we need. So all we have to do in this problem is plug in P equals 420, plug in our rate as a decimal, which is going to be 0.0525, and plug in our time is 4.75. Plug all that into our calculator. I'm getting $104, and we're going to round to 74 cents. That is how much interest would be owed on this loan of $420. But you might ask the question, how much money do you owe? Well, the total amount that you owe is the original principal that you borrowed, plus the interest that you owe. In this problem, that would be $420, plus the $104.74. So the total amount that you owe on this loan at the end of 4.75 years is $524 and 74 cents. Okay, I think the question asked for this answer. This stuff in green was just a bonus problem. Let's do another example that turns out to be slightly more complicated. We're going to use the simple interest formula again. The rate again is an annual rate, but this time it's given in a slightly different form. Another complication in this problem you'll notice is that our time is given in days, but we really want our time to be measured in years because this is an annual rate. So one thing at a time, let's look at this interest rate. That's one and a quarter percent. Well, one fourth is 0.25. So this interest rate is 1.25%. Written as a decimal, that is 0 0.0125. So that's going to be the interest rate that we plug into this problem. For our time, though, we need to convert 60 days into years. Again, we're going to assume there are 360 days in a year. That's the banker's rule. So 60 days is 60 divided by 360 years. We're going to plug these two values that we just found into our formula. And if we do that, we get 1520 times 0 0.0125 times 60 over 3. 60. I'll plug all of that into my calculator and I get a total interest owed of $3.17. And that's the answer that we're looking for. So I think that we can move on to the next problem. Again, we're going to be using the simple interest formula, but this time we're determining the missing value. We're given that P is 1675. We don't know what R is. We're given that T is four years, and we're given that I is $107.20. Our goal is to solve for R. The first thing that we can do is multiply 1675 by four. That is 6,700, and that number is still multiplied by R. On the left side, we still have 10720. Now to solve for r, what we would do is we would divide both sides of the equation by 6700. On the right side, that gets us r by itself. On the left side, we can divide 10720 by 6700, and I get 0 0.016. Now that might be the answer that you're looking for, but you also might need to write that as a percent. Moving the decimal place two times to the right, that is 1.6%. That's annually, per year. And we knew that rate was per year because our time up here was given in years. Okay, another problem. Alex takes out a loan of $270. Make sure there's a full stop there. That's a period, not a decimal place. 23 days later, uh, Alex pays off the loan for $294.15. Question is, what is the annual simple interest rate that was charged? All right, we're definitely going to be using the simple interest formula again. What do we know? Well, we know that initially there was a loan taken for $270. That's going to be the principal of our loan. Our interest rate 
we don't know. That's what we're trying to find. The amount of time that this loan was taken out for was 23 days. Note though that we're going to have to convert this into years because we're looking for the annual simple interest rate or the yearly simple interest rate. So using the assumption that we have 360 days in a year, that's the banker's rule, 23 days is going to be the same thing as 23 over 360 years. Okay, so that's the time that we're going to plug into this formula. We need one more thing. We need the interest that was paid on this loan. Well, you'll notice that Alex paid the loan off for $294.15. The original amount of the loan was $270. So the amount of interest that was paid on this loan is going to be that final payment that paid off the loan minus the original principal of the loan. In other words, I hope that it makes sense that the interest that Alex paid on this loan was $24.15. Okay, we're going to take those three orange values and plug those into our formula. That gives us this equation here, which we can solve for R. The first thing that I'm going to do to solve for R is multiply 270 by this 23 over 360. Doing that gives me 17.25 on the right-hand side of this equation. That is still multiplied by R, so I'm going to carry the R down. Then on the left side, we have $24.15 still. Now, in order to solve this equation for R, what we need to do is divide by 17.25. That's going to give us R by itself on the right side of the equation. And on the left, we just need to divide 24.15 by 17.25. That gives us 1.4 as an answer. But don't be fooled. Recall that every R that we find in this simple interest formula is actually a decimal, not a percent. So we need to convert that into a percent by moving the decimal two places to the right. That gives us an annual interest rate of 140% per year. We have just one more problem to solve now, and it's the most complicated one. We have a loan and its initial principal was $3,000. The interest rate is going to be 5%. That's 0 0.05. We took this loan out on April 1st, which I'll circle here on this chart. This is the first day of April. That's the 91st day of the year, according to this chart. And on May 1st, which is right here on this chart, we made a payment of $2,000. On the day of maturity, June 1st, that's right here on our day chart. We want to know what the balance due on this loan is on that date. Okay, so you took out this loan on April 1st and on May 1st you made a payment. To find out what that payment does to our loan, we need to calculate how much interest accrued on the original $3,000 from April 1st to May 1st. Well, how many days were there between April 1st and May 1st? If you look at this chart, April 1st was the 91st day of the year, May 1st was the 121st day of the year. If you subtract 121 minus 91, we get that there were 30 days between the beginning of this loan and when you made a payment. In those 30 days, let's find out how much interest accrued. Well, using our simple interest formula, we know that 30 days is going to be 30 over 360 years. That gives us a total interest accrued of $12.50. Now, at this point, we're going to pay $2,000 towards this loan. And according to this United States rule, if we make a partial payment on a loan, we need to pay the interest that is accrued first, and then the rest of the money from that partial payment goes towards reducing the principal of the loan. So what that means is from this $2,000 partial payment, $12.50 of that is going to pay off the interest that is accrued. That leaves $1,987.50 to reduce the principal of the loan. The loan started at $3,000. So the new principal of the loan is going to be that $3,000 minus the $1,987.50 that we had left from our partial payment, which makes our new principal amount $1,012.50. So that is the new principal as of May 1st. Now we have a whole new interest problem on our hands that starts on May 1st and ends on June 1st. On May 1st, we have a principal on our loan of $1,012.50. We still have the same interest rate. And between May 1st and the maturity date of this loan, which is June 1st, you'll notice up on this chart that there are 31 days between those two dates. So our time period of this loan is going to be 31 days. This T we need to convert into years. So we're going to change our time into 31 over 360 years. Now we can plug all of that into our simple interest formula, I equals PRT. Plugging all of that into a calculator gives me that the interest that we owe on this thing is about $4.36. Now finally, the balance due on this thing as of June 1st, the maturity date, is the principal of the loan as of May 1st plus the interest that we owe 
that gives me a balance of $1,016.86. And oh my gosh, that was a complicated problem. You might want to watch that a couple of times, slow it down, hit pause when you need to. But I'm going to stop the video right there, and I will see you in the next one.